When I, the previous video, I want I got to read this comment because um. <laughs> Oh, I praise you, brethren, you sisters, who um, in the comment sections who uh, who post scripture. That that's that's awesome. That that's the way it should be. And those of you who do comment, uh, thank you for your input, and thank you for your comments. Praise the Lord for you. Um, gotta I gotta share this comment with you from the previous video. Gotta share this. Um. If the Lord puts you in a position such as this, you can go into a day thinking, okay, this is what the Lord's going to have me to do. Then you read the scripture. It's like, no, no, no. Got something else for you. But I got to share this comment. This, this is the, a pinned comment in the previous video. Got to share this. And this is, of course, um, from my brother, my best friend, uh, Jelly. <laughs> and you devil you can go to hell saying that we got pet names for each other you can go to hell about right time for you to do so smoke another cigarette scumbag <laughs> okay but never mind never mind okay 120 ish now then if the lord were to speak to his all capital letters people audibly in this period of time, how would that mesh with walking by faith? Granted, I have been to your home, you and Susan's. I have seen you. However, when I speak to you over the phone, I need no faith because I am able to hear your voice, Sister Susan's voice. So how much faith does that take? Mm. We walk by faith, not by sight, nor by ear. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, I was rebuked by my brother and a sister, my sister our sister, our brother, about need to be better at being there for the brethren, strengthening the brethren. And uh, got it ready to go. Just a little organizing had to be done. That's what I thought was going to happen today. And this, this happens. This happens. I read the scriptures today. The Lord's like, I want you to talk on this. But, 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 what about this? It's like, don't worry about that. Not, not today. Okay? So please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth, okay? Check me out because sometimes I do skip a groove, okay? Just check me out, okay? Follow me along. Very, very interesting. Very interesting and, uh, thing here that the Lord showed me today. Today is the 25th. Did you read the proverb at least today? Hmm? Did you read today's proverb, the 25th? Proverbs 25, verses 4 on verse 7. Now first, we're going to, unlike the previous video, we're going to read these verses first. Then we're going to, then we're going to unpackage some of them. Proverbs 25, verses 4 on verse 7. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, 
come up hither than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Okay, Brad. Okay. Verse 4. Verse 4 and 5 again. Take away the dross from the silver. There shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We want verses 19 on to verse 22. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Yes, you belong to the Lord. You came to the Lord on his terms, not your own, you know, your own terms, booting the door, okay? But you go to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, uh, taking accountability and responsibility that it was your fault that he was on the cross, that you put him on the cross, and that you have the fear of him because he can put you in hell and you call on upon his name and he save you, okay? He saves you. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Having this seal, the seal until the day of redemption, which is talked about in Ephesians. Okay? The Lord knoweth them that are his. Of course, because he dwells within them. The seal until the day of redemption is our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? I, we've talked about this before. A lot of people try, it seems, that they try to separate the event from the Lord himself. The event of the, you know, being brought, uh, caught up together uh, with the Lord in the clouds and stuff like that. Okay? It seems that people like to try to separate the two. The event like that. No, our Lord says, I am the resurrection. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? You can't have one without the other. Okay? All right? It's, it's very bizarre how people seem to try to separate the two. And they're looking for the event, but yet not, I mean, okay, yeah, we're going to be caught up with the, to go to the Lord, but the Lord himself is is that redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Okay? We, we've talked about that before. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having this seal, once saved, always saved, that seal until the day of redemption, the Lord living within the saved, born again, converted um, a person, spirit, soul, and body of the church of the living God. Okay? The Lord knoweth them that are his. And, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. To be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Whereas the ministers of righteousness that work for Satan, you know, these devils which are transformed into what? Ministers of righteousness. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Okay? But yes, we are to depart from iniquity. We're not, to, we're not supposed to be yoked up together with that. It's snowing out today, uh, outside there today. Okay? So yes, we are to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. You know, touch not the unclean thing. All right? But in a great house. And what house is there that's great? Besides the house of the Lord. You're talking about the building. No, hold on. No, hold on. Let's read this verse. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and, and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Now let's unpack this a little bit. Okay. I had once before uh, in error said that this is talking about a saved and a lost man. No, it isn't. Why, how, why do you, what, what changed, Brad? 
Well, number one, I was rebuked on it by a brother. <laughs> you know who you are. Thank you for that. But you look at the verse, but in a great house. What house is greater than the house of the Lord? Now, see, people right away, it's like, okay, because of Catholicism, that whore, you think of what? A church building, right? No, 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 no. You and I are of the Lord's house. Okay, that is a saying meaning that we are related unto him, that we are part of him, that we, you know, we are adopted. Okay, this, you know, adoption. We are part of the Lord's house. Okay, it has nothing to do with an actual physical, literal building. Okay, we are of the Lord's house. Okay, that's what that means. And in a great house. Okay. Great is the Lord and uh, mighty to be praised or however that goes. Someone correct me on that, please. But, you know, great is the Lord. We are of the Lord's house. We are of his heritage. We are adopted. We are adopted sons and daughters. Okay? So, in a great house, we are of the house. You know, there are those who are of the house of David, of the house of Reuben meaning that they are of that lineage. We, by adoption, are of the house of the Lord. Not a building! See, Satan in his subtlety will come to this and try to say, see, you gotta go to a building. And say, Shut up! Okay? No. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, which abide fire, okay? But also of wood and of earth. Wood and earth. Wood and Wood burn up, smoke turn to tem uh, you know kindling, very burned up. Earth, earth can be heated in a kiln and made into a vessel, pottery, and the potter's vessel can be broken. And isn't it interesting that you and I are made out of earth? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. And some to honor. Silver and uh, gold and silver, okay? And some to dishonor, wood and earth. Now, some will take that and say, well, see? See? God's grace covers it all. So just live like a devil because God's grace covers it all. No, 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 no. Number one, this is not a saved and a lost. This is one, these are saved in context to those who are saved, but one who is a vessel of gold and silver, one unto honor, meaning they're, they're walking right. Every, we all sin. We all make mistakes. We sin every day. But see, a just man falls seven times and then get it up again. Saved people don't fall away. Saved people fall because they make we make stupid mistakes choices and stuff like that yes but we don't fall away remember that saved people don't fall away all right and some to dishonor a brother or a sister wood and earth wood and earth thing wood gets burned earth gets heated in a brick kiln and then made into a potter's vessel which can be broken okay all right some to honor and some to dishonor. Those who are of the church of the living God who get messed up. And because of how they've messed up, that example, it's like, you know, brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, love them, love them to death. They're going to they're gonna be in heaven with us. He's going to be up there with us when we go. Yes, he is. But boy, did, did you hear about what he did? Y yeah, yeah, I love him. Love, I had to, had to separate myself from him or her. Okay, I, I'm thinking of no one particular. Okay, no one particular. But it's like, yeah, brother, so-and-so, sister, so-and-so. Yeah, they're, they're good. They can't wait to get up there with them. Yeah, but did you hear about what he did? Did you hear about what he did? Yeah, how he... he sinned like that and just made me uh, just embarrassed not only himself which is redundant but how he embarrassed us his brethren 
church of the living God. How he brought shame upon the Lord, embarrassed him for what he did. All the while saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm saved, it's okay. And all things are lawful for you, but not all things are expedient, okay? Okay? Some to dishonor, yeah, brother so-and-so, or his sister so-and-so. Love him. Can't wait to see him up there in heaven, but, uh, you, you, you heard about what he did, right? Yeah. Oh, man, that was, that was, that was bad. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Get the point? And this is, re this, this is reinforced by verse 21. If a man, therefore, purge himself from these. What are the these? Carnal things, temporal things, the little shortcuts, the little distractions that Satan, the prince of the power of the air, offers you. Our Lord, in order to bring forth a vessel meet for the master's use, it seems, and scripture backs this up, that the Lord when fashioning something, usually takes his time. He's not in a hurry. There are some exceptions to this, of course. Of course, you know, uh, there's a sister of ours who's waiting for us who was saved, like, not what, even maybe five or six years and is up in heaven now waiting for us. But the Lord did with her quite a bit of good, quite a bit of work. A lasting work, lasting testimony of his power upon this sister. And when I'm saying that, I am thinking of someone specifically. Uh, but the testimony that she left in the short time of being of the Church of the Living God speaks volumes and has, and has, and has helped others, uh, you know, really has. Okay? So, if a man therefore purge himself from these, getting away from the shortcuts... Getting away out of the world, you know, whatever you got to do. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. And see, we are saved unto good works. Being ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation, the good works not to save ourselves or to say, stay saved. Hold your place here. And of course, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. Why, you know, people are always, you know, to about uh, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And the works are, that are referenced there are the works of the law. Okay, verse 10, for we are his workmanship, a new creature created in Christ Jesus because he lives within you, okay, sealed into the day of redemption. Once, that, 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 that's, that's right there, okay? It's right in verse 14 in chapter 1, which is, uh, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession the catching away before the body, uh, before the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, erroneously referred to as the rapture. Okay, it's it's right there. It's right there. You got these, and I'm being polite. These idiots. Oh, well, well, Christians are going through the great tribulation. You're right. You're right. You're right. You are right. Yeah. Yeah, you Christians are going to be going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, and uh, the great tribulation, the great tribulation does not appear in Scripture. Just like the Antichrist does not appear in Scripture. Okay? Oh, Brad, you're being... Shut up! Shut up! Is this your standard or what? Huh? Is this your standard... Huh? Oh, it is? Then why don't you act like it? Okay? 
You say one thing out your mouth, and then the rest you talk out from your rear end. What's wrong with you? But anyway, verse 10. We are his workmanship, the creature in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus unto, unto good works. Not to stay saved, be saved, or anything like that. We are ambassadors for Christ. Okay? <laughs> you know patience? Ugh! Patience. Ugh, I'm not a doctor. You and me both, brother. We're not doctors. Sister, we're not doctors. But see, in patience, going the way the Lord would have you to go, which is the right way, takes time. And Satan is all about the shortcuts. Satan is all about the shortcuts. Now, there are, you know, like when you're doing a, a job or some kind of physical thing, you work smarter, not harder. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. You know, uh, that, that, I mean, use a little common sense here, people. Okay. If you got to move like a hundred pound rock, okay, is it, is it wise for you to like, I mean, some people can, <laughs> okay, some people can, you know, to pick it up, you strain your back and stuff like that and carry it or get a dolly under that thing and use the leverage of a dolly, okay? We're not talking about that. We're talking about things of lasting importance, of eternal consequence, okay? Whether it be good or whether it be evil, okay? God wants, is going to bring you into the process of sanctification, which is a drawn out process, okay? It's a, it's a never ending process. And see, with some of these YouTube celebrity preachers out there, and some of the, and I got, I, I'm not going to mention the name, but I, I'm going to Old Pass Baptist Church, okay? What a, what a stuck up arrogant clown. Wow. Wow. That guy, you know, preaches from the scriptures, but he's against the redemption of the purchased possession. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. But never, never mind about that, okay? It's all long cuts with the Lord. It's a process. It's a never-ending process. But some of these pre uh, preachers, especially here on YouTube, give off this aura as if they've reached the pinnacle of sanctification. Like they're, they're already complete. Like they're, they're, they've reached the upper echelon. You know some of these? You see some of these preachers, huh? They, they, their poop don't stink. Right? They don't make mistakes. <laughs> and, and they rub in your face of how holy they are. This, is, this was something that was going to be touched on the video that I was, thought I was going to do today anyway. But, you know, watch out for guys like that. Watch out for guys like that. We, we're all in the, we, you know, we're all... Man, man is fallible. We make mistakes. We sin every day. Okay? That's why the process of uh, sanctification takes time. Until the day of your death, of the Church of the Living God, you're going to be within that process of sanctification. And yes, sometimes it's one step forward and ten steps back. Yes! But nonetheless, again, therein, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. Saved people don't fall away. We fall because of our own stupidity. Okay? Yes. But we don't fall away. But see, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, now go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. 
Flee also youthful lusts, because childhood and youth are what? Come on, come on, you know this. Vanity. Childhood and youth are vanity. Look, look at these things in the world. You got that, that, there's that one you uh, that one the way uh, that uh, shorts that woman who's 63 years old she looks like she's 20. The beauty of the age is the gray hair or the gray head. <laughs> okay, like fine wine, it gets beautiful, more tasteful with age. Okay, hey, not, you you kids out there, not not a knock against you, but Satan. Is telling you what? Thin is in. Youth is king. You got 50-year-olds trying to look as if they're the, what the term is, millennials. And dressing as if they're teenagers. Okay? All right? Yeah. And the scriptures tell us we're to flee also youthful lusts. Okay? I'm getting old. All right, my form, I, which I could do a lot better on, it, it's, you know, the world tells you, the world tells you that you got to look like this uh, skinny, rail, uh, youthful thing that's, you know, uh, all uh, skin, no meats, and th that's from the world. That's from the world. Especially with you women out there. You gotta walk around looking like uh, porn stars or something. And a woman who feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. I have known people who on the outside were, you know, just absolutely beautiful to the eye. I've seen some gorgeous women. You women, you've seen some gorgeous men, right? And you talk with them. They appear beautiful on the outside, but inwardly they are full of dead men's bones. Sometimes I wish I were deaf and blind, right? Because if you were blind, you wouldn't be judging off of what you see. And we're not supposed to. But see, because we are saved sinners, we do that, don't we? It's kind of, you know, it takes a lot of work and prayer and staying in the scriptures to get over that. Okay? And yet there's still a little vestige left in all of us. You say that there ain't in you like that? I, I, you lie. And your breath stink. I can smell it all the way over here. Okay? But that's, that's the nature of man. That's the nature of man. And everything is geared toward the precious little children which are being made into monsters and idols. <laughs> Flee also youthful lusts. And as a youth, what is it? It's all about you. Most 20-year-olds, uh, not all, not all, I was 20 <laughs> myself uh, over 20 years ago, okay? Most 20-year-olds that I have met all usually have, not all, but usually have the, well, oh, I know something. I am this. I know, you know, I know a thing or two about a thing or two. It, it just seems to happen. I mean, and of course we have in Scripture with Timothy, but Timothy was an exception. Why? Because he was brought up in the Scriptures, Okay. When you're a kid, a youth, you work really hard to get older so you can do what? Buy your booze, right? Or get your cigarettes or vote or get a lottery ticket or try to get that hot, that hot chick or that fine looking man, right? And then when you get older, it's like you want to go back to youth. Where does that come from? It doesn't come from this. I'll tell you that. Flee also youthful lusts. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And a pure heart is a broken heart. A pure heart is a heart that belongs unto the Lord. 
A pure heart is a heart that is contrite, that fears. Okay? And also, too, look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 13. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity. Oh, say it. Come on. Say it. Say it. Patience. Patience. Persecutions. Afflictions which came on to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. And here it is. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Doing things the right way, according to the scriptures for us today in this dispensation, well, from the world that looking for the shortcut, how to step over, step on, to get ahead for themselves on other people, we who adhere to the scriptures are going to get persecuted for it, doing it the right way. Well, Satan, here, take a shortcut. An example, okay, here's just, this is just an example. Some, some guy working out to get the, those disgusting looking big muscles and Stuff like that. Hey, that's your thing. More power to you. If you're offended by that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that, that personally, it's... Uh, uh. Even when I was a sodomite, that, that was like, uh, you know? But never mind, never mind. Okay, but, you know, what does Satan do? Instead of doing it the old-fashioned way by lifting weights, take a pill. Take a steroid. Take a steroid or a... Pop the pill. Then go work out. Then them, them muscles get really big, right? Hmm. Same could be applied with the, these people who put plastic on their face. It's not actually plastic, but they take shave off things from their buttocks. <coughs> yeah, or their, their legs. Or a cadaver. <laughs> They get a little about that one, yeah. With some of these plastic surgery things, where do they get that? They get it from your buttocks, your legs, or a cadaver. <laughs> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Say, hey, hey, you want to get to point uh, B? Or you want to get to point C instead of going from A, B, C? Here, take this way. Go this way and go this way. It's a, it's a, you know, take a shortcut. Yeah, it's a straight line there, but it takes a long time to get there. Go veer off, it'll, you'll get there a little quicker. Seduce you. Deceiving and being deceived. Want to get to God quick, like, huh? Here, you want to, or here, start talking in tongues. You're like, you know, here, you know, listen for the voice of the Lord. And then you start hearing voices in your head, and some of you actually think that's God. Why we read that comment at the beginning of this video. When it gets right down to it, brethren, our Lord takes us through, as I said, as we have talked about, a purification process. To take away the dross from the silver. And there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. A vessel meet for the master's use. Take away the wicked from before the king. And his throne shall be established in righteousness. Verse 6 and 7 now. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king. And stand not in the place of great men. And I love this. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince, whom thine eyes have seen. Galatians chapter 6. And, and, and this is where this began. 
because in, in the video about strengthening the brethren, which I thought I was going to do today, we're going to be talking about verse 2. And for this right now, we're going to read verses 3 and 4. For if a man, well, Galatians 6, 3 and 4. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Look at these YouTube preachers. Look at the preachers in general who's like, I've been to a Jesuit college trained by Jesuits and I got a piece of paper that says, I can do this from Catholicism, the Jesuits. What do you have? Hmm? Where's your credentials? Hey, hey, you, you, you know, I know you paid a lot of money for that piece of paper, but I'm short on toilet paper. Can I use it? Yeah. Yeah. And, you, you know, when you've been walking with the Lord for a period of time, this is one of the trappings of it. That, okay, you've been on a, 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 you're on a path of sanctification. You've gotten things because of the Lord. He has given you victory over many things. But not everybody is on that plane. Not everybody is there. Not everybody is as holy as you are. Okay? Not everybody is on the same uh, level as you, right? Hmm. We're all different. There are different levels of sanctification, yes. But I despise, I despise these people who rub in your face their sanctification. Rub it in your face. Okay? There's a difference about sharing with the brother. It's like, hey, you know, brother, sister, look, for a long time, I dealt with that too. But eventually... <laughs> Knock on wood. The Lord brought me out of it. Okay? Okay? Keep your eyes focused on the Lord. Do what he say in Scripture. And eventually, he'll give you the victory over it. But see, that what happens is usually this. The flesh always gets in the way. And we make bad choices. Okay? There's, there's one, th it's one thing talking on to a brother or a sister to edify them. It's like, hey, I've been there. Stay with the Lord. Then someone's like, well, I've been saved for this and that. And I feel like, Paul, I haven't done this for 25 years. Rubbing it in your face. That makes, that, that. That, that, that's, that, but, oh. Oh. Verse 3 and 4 in Galatians 6 again. We didn't read verse 4, but let's continue. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man... <laughs> Excuse me. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Not in another. This is not talking about you boasting of yourself through the Lord. Okay? That's not what this is talking about. Okay? The Lord will give you victory. Okay? And who's the hidden man of the heart? Okay? The Lord within you. Okay? That's what this is talking about. This is not giving credence to you boasting of yourself. Okay? You got to remember that. Okay? Dear friend, dear friend, we're dirt. We're dirt. We're grass. Okay? Isaiah 40. Made mention of this in the previous video. Isaiah 40. And uh, praise the Lord, someone put it in the comment section. Praise the Lord. You know who you are. Isaiah 40, verses 6 and seven, uh, six on verse 8. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. 
and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower that is the flower of the field here today gone tomorrow the grass withereth and the flower flower fadeth because the spirit lowercase s of the lord bloweth upon it surely the people is grass the grass withereth the flower fadeth but the word of our God shall stand forever. First hmm. Corinthians chapter four. First Corinthians chapter four. Verses seven on to verse fourteen. Some of these YouTube personality Christians. Rub in your face their accomplishments. It's one thing to share to edify. It's another thing of boasting how great you are and how sanctified and hen, how holier than thou are than everybody else. Okay? Brethren today don't need to hear that. They, brethren, we need encouragement. We need people to, you know, be a little bit easier to get a hold of. Okay? Yes. But people who are struggling, who can't pay their rent, who, who can't get a job because of the Vatican, because they won't bow down and kiss the foot of the Vatican. Okay? They don't need to have how great you are rubbed in their face. They don't need that. We don't need that. Okay? Verse 7 on to verse 14 in 1 Corinthians 4. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? I'm God's gift. You know, God groomed me to be this. Yes, he did. You know, <laughs> I got this because I was such a catch, right? You have life today because the Lord gave it to you. You have the light in your eyes because the Lord gave it to you. You can breathe because the Lord allowed it to be so. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. Of the church of the living God or you scoundrel devils. Okay. The Lord is the one that has allowed you to live today. Okay. Who are you? Who are you? For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? But rather that it was owed you, right? Because you're such a great catch. Yeah. Now ye are full. <laughs> I love this. Now are ye rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. Verse 6. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king. Hmm. And how many of these Christians reign as if they are kings? Well, we're going to be priests and kings. That, that's in context to the uh, kingdom of heaven. Okay? You're not supposed to be walking around as your lordship, your holiness here, and rubbing it in the other people's faces. Remember, we're supposed to condescend and uh, be there for the lowly, to be with the lowly. I mean, rather than to be, you know, put yourself up here on your pedestal that you get a nosebleed because you're so special. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. I love Paul's sarcasm there. Let's read that. Now, okay, excuse me. Now are ye full. Now are ye rich. Ye yeah, have reigned as kings without us. Oh, good for you. And I would God ye did reign. Yeah, that we might also reign with you. Oh, that some of your greatness, if I can just be in your presence, your holiness, if I can just be in the shadow of you, maybe some of that aura of that perfectness that you have might rub off on me. You. Oh. Oh. Chafe my buttocks. Oh. And look, and look at how Paul answers this. Okay? Look at this. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. 
For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. I think about my dear brother from, uh, our dear brother, excuse me, our dear brother from North Dakota, who, um, who the Lord has just done some amazing things with him recently. Just some amazing things with him. And as the church of the living God, which he is, um, has given testimony unto the Lord of how we of the church of the living God ought to be. Just amazing. It's a, it's a thing of comfort for me to, when I talk with our brother from North Dakota, it's a thing of comfort unto me to hear when, you know, like it rains, when it rains, it pours. It, when it rains, it pours. But then when it pours, things grow. Flowers come up. Fruit comes when it rains, it pours, you know. Just absolutely beautiful. For I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. Yeah, you're the upper crust. Oh, we the bottom feeders, right? Yeah. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Yes. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Look at the YouTube Christians. Okay? I pray, you know, uh, thank you to all of you who subscribe. I know probably a majority of you hate me and that, whatever. But I, I don't want to be, I don't want a thousand subscribers. Okay, if that happens, I hope not, but I don't want that. That's why I had my subscriber uh, number hidden for so long, because I don't want it to be a source of boasting. You know, well, you only have so much. So, so what? So what? Look at, and look at the guys who have almost a million or half a million. Uh, sub I mean, come on. It becomes a thing of contention. That's why I always had the subscriber number hidden. Because it's like, whatever, it's not about that. Okay? But they are honorable. But we, the little guys, we, the little folk, we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger. Thank you, by the way. You know who you are and you know what I'm talking about. That came at the perfect time. We were able to put some food in our fridge because we were getting a little, we're not going to starve. We got, we still got about, what, uh, 40 pounds of rice left over, uh, a little, almost 60 actually, or somewhere in there of rice. We're never going to starve, but it was like, oh boy, Lord, we ain't going to starve. I'm not going to starve, praise the Lord. But, you know, it's, and then it's like, wow, thank you. Thank you. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. This ain't certain, I'll tell you that. It is today, don't know about tomorrow. And labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being reviled, we bless. How do we bless when we are reviled? Tell them the truth of Scripture. Okay? It's how you love your enemy by telling them the truth. Not this Christian pond scum deception that you don't tell the sinner of their sin. Okay? Don't scare them. Don't tell them the truth. Don't tell them about their sin. You know, love them. And what kingdom are you building? Okay? We're not building a kingdom today. Satan's building a kingdom. You go take a long walk off of a short pier. Okay? Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and the offscurring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. And of course, again, as my beloved sons, I warn you. And of course, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Take a shortcut. You, you got to wait for fundage to come, but you find some guy's debit card, someone who trusted you, loved you, 
Okay? And then you steal from them. But then, as of a pure brother of the church of the living God, they forgive that very one who did that to them. Oh, what a testimony. What a testimony. I can't do that. You should. I love you. You should. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay? <clears throat> I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. See, you got Christianity. Even though they're not the name and blame it crowd. You got Christianity saying it's all about you. God loves you. He wants to bless you. And blah, 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 blah. Okay? And that's true to a point, yes. But see, they make it all about you. When we are called on to good works, to be ambassadors for Christ. And when it rains, it pours. But in that raining and pouring, flowers, fruit arises from it. You see? We are made as a spectacle. Why? Because we're Christ-dependent. And see, Satan comes along with his shortcuts and offers you this, that, and the other thing to make you self-sufficient. Yeah, we're talking about this again. Got a problem with that? What's something else? You ain't blind to what the times are. Are you? Or, or are things just going for, so good for you, you forget where you came from? Hmm? How many of you have seen or have been tempted with a shortcut that might relieve things just like that? But the Lord's like, don't do it. Lord, if I do this, it's, it's like when, the one, uh, when, a, when given a large amount of money once to... Uh, preach on something. It's like, no, you crazy? I don't care how much money you offer me or say I'll give you if you do uh, speak about this. So, that's not how it works. No, you, 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 you know, <laughs> your money perish with thee. Okay? Uh-uh. Don't work that way. Don't work that way. Okay? Here, take a little. Here, here's a little shortcut for you. It'll make things better for you right away. But he who, what is it? How's that go? He who uh, is hasty to strive right away in the end thereof it will not be good. I just butchered that. Um, I just butchered that. Someone in the comment section. <laughs> but uh, I take a shortcut. Now, when you read here, verses six and seven. Especially, okay, verse 6 and 7 again in Proverbs 25. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king. What king? The king of the Jews, that's a lowercase k. Are you king? Are you king of your own castle, right? And stand not in the place of great men. Okay? For better is it, for better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. What do we instinctively right away think of? Well, what do we think of? We think of Luke. <clears throat> I hope you do. This is what I thought of right away. Sorry, sorry if I'm projecting that onto you. You might not have thought of that. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, right? And, of course, comparing Scripture with Scripture... Yeah, verse 7, especially there, this is a natural thing to compare it with. Amen? Hallelujah! But we're going to get a little deeper. Luke 14, verses 7 on to verse 11. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief room, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. Just remember those of you who like to rub how great you are in other people's faces when they need encouragement, not some schmuck boasting themselves, okay? All right? There's always someone who's a little bit better than you. 
And ultimately, there is one greater than you. Or have you forgotten that, Your Holiness? <laughs> Grinds my gears, boy. And he that bade thee, and he that bade thee, and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou being with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. And when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, capital F, friend there. Notice that? <clears throat> go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now, see, that's that's a natural. That I mean, that's a kind of a no-brainer there, right? Right? Because I mean, look at verse seven. For better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither. That the, I mean, they 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 fit together like peas and carrots, right? Right? Well, let's get a little deeper here, okay? Let's get a little deeper here. Go to Proverbs sixteen. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. We want verses 15 on to verse 20. In the light of the king's countenance is life. That's a lowercase k. But can you can you reckon uh, who's king what king they're talking about here? Yeah, okay. In the light of the king's countenance, countenance is life. And his favor is as the, is as a cloud of the latter rain, latter rain, referring on to the blessing of Israel in the latter days. You got these charismatic twits want to say latter rain. They talk about latter rain for today. Lord gave me a video to do on that. Let me write that down so I don't forget. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. Latter rain has nothing to do for us today. Okay. How much better is it to get wisdom, the fear of the Lord, than gold, and to get understanding, departing from evil, rather than, rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to, to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Whose way? Whose way? His way? He is the way, the truth, the life. Hmm? Okay? And preserveth his soul. Right there tells you what dispensation this is for. This was written under the law, which it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Okay? Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. <laughs> I'm better than you. I've been doing this for 25 years and look at how great I am. I'm so much better than you and I'm going to rub it into your face. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> at least, at the very least, our disgusting devil enemies don't rub, do that kind of stuff. Why do some of these Christians do things that not even these devils do. Why? Because religiosity can be the greatest form of self-exaltation. Religiosity can become the greatest form of exalting yourself. And you look here on YouTube. You look out there at some of these Jesuit-trained scholars. Okay? Give you a, I don't want to be like that. And amen. I have several examples. Thank you. Thank you. I have several examples to see. It's like, I don't ever want to be like that. <laughs> I don't ever want to be like that, man. No way. Yeah, I got my problems. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. I got problems. Why? Because they keep me Christ dependent. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to be like some of these guys. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. 
God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the lowly. God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Amen. And verse 20, he that, he that handleth the matter wisely in the fear of the Lord shall find good. And what is good? God. And whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. I've never understood, okay, if someone has been called to this position, why do you want to be con taken seriously by peers or you know, you do this, it's like, you know, you know, your 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 thing has to be done in 4K or you have to put all this fancy schmancy stuff on it, you know, to, so you're, or you got to wear these fine clothes or, I, I, I've never, ever, ever understood that. Yeah, I sit here in Brother Alexander's room, turn on the computer, put, use the microphone and that's it. There's no flesh, there's no pizzazz. There's definitely no visual stimuli unless I'm using that, that OBS thing for something, you know? Simple. Simple. Why why do people got to dress it up? Oh, there you go. I got to look professional. I got to look serious. I, I got to do this. I got to do that. Why? Why? I, I, I've never, I've never, nor will I ever understand that. Are you approachable? And that's the thing. Are you approachable? Well, yeah, I mean, and not I'm being serious. Sometimes <laughs> we're approachable to our de detriment. My wife could testify to that. You know, it's like having some, you know, sometimes, Brad, there are some people who, can, I know, I know. But see, that's, are you approachable? Well, I don't want everybody to approach me. Yeah, okay. But are you? That's that's the point. Do you condescend with men of low estate? Or are you just reserved for the upper crust? Well, that's who the Lord will have me to speak to only. Only? Yeah. I smell something. And it smells like something that comes from betwixt your buttocks. Stank. Go to Psalm 84. This right here. This right here. I read, I, I read this because this was like, this was impromptu. And it's like, wow. Okay. For better it is. Okay, verse 6 and 7 again. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put in the present, put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Psalm 84, verses 8 on to verse 12. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, salah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. According to what he says for us today in this dispensation. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. And what does Satan do? Take a shortcut. Do something. Go go off the beaten path. It'll, it'll save you time. Um, uh, uh, John Bunyan in his excellent uh, The Pilgrim's Progress uh, talks about that. I forget the characters' names that he uses for that. But, you know, straight is the gate and narrow is the way, but wide and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, while straight and narrow is the way that leads to life. 
broad, there are many directions to go. Save yourself some time. Take a shortcut. No, straight. Well, that way's hard. Yeah. The hard is what makes it great. Not for the sake that, well, I did it the hard way. I have run into people who have liked that before. No. That hard way is a way of purification, of sanctification, of removing the dross from the silver. When Satan with religiosity comes along and says, you can have your cake and eat it too, go this way. That's just a little off of the beaten path. It'll save you some time and you'll thank me for it later when your pockets are heavy and when your life is to the full and you can always smile, right? I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Ooh, ooh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. If you haven't figured this out, this is kind of for our instruction in righteousness. The times are coming, brethren, and probably are here for many of you where Satan is offering you these temptations to where you know that the Lord wouldn't have you to take that side cut. The Lord wouldn't want you to do that to make things easier, but to trust on him and go through that storm with the Lord. When it rains, it pours. But after the rain and pouring, up come the beautiful flowers. Up comes fruit. Hmm? Hebrews 11, verses 23 and verse 29. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses... When he was come to years, refused to, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The affluence, the opulence, the, uh, I might have used the wrong word, excuse me. But the being able to live high on the hog by being associated with the Egyptians. And for our instruction in righteousness, which this is referring to, about Egypt being a type of the world. And Satan in religiosity comes along offering you worldly things in the guise of religiosity. Hmm? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, the treasures of the world. And what does Satan offer you? All this will I give unto thee. Because it's mine to give unto whomsoever I will. If you fall down and worship me, I'll be thine. And he shows you the world in a moment of time. We talk about this at length. How? You know, flip the channel or, 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 or scroll up on your YouTube or your the, whatever it is. He shows you all this uh, reality fantasy, right? <laughs> Yeah. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense with the C, a noun, unto the recompense of the reward. It's a noun. Recompense with a C is a noun. Recompense with an S is a verb. Okay? That's something that our beloved Mr. Webster botched in his dictionary. Okay? There are two spellings of the word. God put it that way for a reason, see. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Oh, and Satan, when you get saved, when the Lord saves you, he lost, uh, he lost one, so he's got to do what he can to, you know, especially when you're a babe, you know, he's saying the Lord allows them to, you know, to send, you know, jehos or morons after you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By faith, he forsook Egypt, the world, not fearing the wrath of the king, Pharaoh, a type of Satan. For he endured 
as seeing him who is invisible. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. As seeing him that is invisible. By faith they passed through the Red Sea. As by dry land, when the Egyptians followed, which the Egyptians is saying to do, were drowned. And you got to remember what it says of Moses, what the scripture says in Mos of Moses in Numbers 12. Just one verse. I'll go there, please, because I want you to see that. About Moses, okay? Moses, you know, like uh, Stephen talked about, you know, he, he, Moses was like, can't these people understand that the Lord is going to use me to save them? Lo, Moses was what? Numbers 12, 3? Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Meek. Not weak. Meek. Humble. Christ dependent. Moses had his oopsies when, you know, he got ticked off. And at the guys, it's like, should we get water from you for the rock? Bam, bam, and hit the rock twice. Okay. When the rock was already hit once, the second time he was supposed to speak onto the rock. Okay. Okay, yes. But Moses was meek. Moses was very meek. Okay. And see, Satan offers you the world. How many of you are in a situation right now where when you go to the Lord in prayer, he's like, wait. Oh, oh, brother, sister. <laughs> how, how many times? Wait, Brad. Lord, wait. Lord, have I let you down? No, 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 you, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. Okay, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. But see, while you're waiting, the accuser of the brethren. Ah. So let me tempt him. Let me tempt him with the shortcut. We'll see. We'll see how, how faithful your little servant is there. Huh? He is the accuser of the brethren. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Let me throw a temptation. Let me throw a shortcut at him. Let, let me bring it to fruition, but in the end thereof be poisonous unto him. Come on, let me do that. Let me do that. How many of you are in a position right now where you have to wait, are, are being told to wait, but yet at the same time, here are coming little temptations. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, and you can go in and whatever, whatever you're waiting for, whether it's for a help meet, whether you, you know, hey, <laughs> Lord, uh, my rent's due tomorrow, okay? Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, I, I know, I know, uh, you know, or whatever. Or it's like, oh, Lord, I don't know if my health is going to... Whatever it is, the Lord keeps telling you, be still and know that I am God. But along comes Satan and the world, the flesh and the devil. Hey, take this shortcut. For better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither. Come up hither. Being made uh, identifiable with the lowly. Being of the church of the living God. For better it is, for better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither. Oh, definitely better. Come up hither, as you have already figured out. I'm intuiting in this. Come up hither, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Then that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. The prince. Hmm. Prince. Hmm. What, what prince? Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 on verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Look at that verse 2. 
We're seeking to walk honestly, not handling the word of God deceitfully. When you got Christians taking not even the word of God, but a Bible and using that deceitfully to puff up your flesh, to make you feel good. Whereas if they were a minister of the Lord, it would be about the mortification of the flesh, not the puffing it up. Shows you what side they're on. Okay? And by manifestation of the truth. Like Peter says, don't be, don't be shocked when they, when, you know, you don't go to the same excess of riot. That, you know, don't be surprised about the fiery trial to, that's going to try you. When you're just like, okay, Lord, you, though you slay me, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to go through this ringer. I could, the, Satan is offering me this, that, and the other thing to get out of this. But no, I'm going through it because you tell me to, and I'm trusting on you. When it rains, it pours, right, brother? But see, brother, like I told you, when it rains, it pours. But see, with that rain, that deluge that you've been going through, look at the fruit that's coming up. Look at that fruit that can feed others. Okay? I love you. All right? Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. How, how come you're not that, that? Go the easy way. Go, the, go that way. The straightest way. There are so many other things you can do. Why are you going this way? The straightest way. It's the right way. In whom the little g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And of course, of course, Ephesians 2, Ephesians chapter 2. Wait, what, what are you doing, Brad? Ephesians 2, verses 2 and 3. Where in the time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. For better, it, uh, verse 7 in uh, Proverbs 25, For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince, whom thine eyes have seen. What prince? What prince? Among whom also, back in Ephesians 2, verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh. Notice that's mentioned first. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature unregenerate. The children of wrath, even as others. <laughs> and of course, Ephesians 6.12, you ought to know this one by heart. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, you know, the upper echelons, which some of these Christians want to adjoin themselves unto. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither. Hmm. Better to be with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Better it is for you that you be of the church of the living God and suffer the persecutions of this world for not walking according to the course of this world than to give in and to screw everything up for yourself because you've fall, fallen for one of the temptations that comes to you. <laughs> Ultimately, of course, better for it is to be said unto you, come up hither. What do I need to be saved for? If you're not saved by our Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. Uh, yeah, it's better that you be saved. Come up hither. 
It's better that you be saved. Why do you think there are all these devils out there trying to blur what true salvation is? Because there are, you know, there's so many options, right? No, there's only one way. There's only one way. Only one way. But see, note that in verse 7 there in Proverbs 24. In the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Signs and wonders. Hmm? Go to Matthew chapter 16. Not Maccabees. Matthew chapter 16. Just one verse. Verse 23. We, you need to hear this. Matthew chapter 16. Verse 23. <laughs> Here's the Lord putting the Pope in his place, right? You Catholics. Peter was never a Pope. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men, because the serpent was cursed to eat the dust of the earth, and we are dust. This is what Satan's about, right? Right here. This is what Satan is about. And everything that Satan is about, thine eyes have seen. Talking in tongues, right? Hearing an audible voice that comes actually from a devil. I've seen it. You've seen a devil. Or uh, signs and lying wonders. See, Satan works in the realm of temporal, carnal, fleshly. And the spiritual side is the spirit of that spirit of Antichrist to be against and replace. Why do you think these coadjutors are so good sometimes? Because they know how to put on the illusion, the facade. They're, they're actors. They're actors. Okay? Because it's all about the visual. It's all about what can be seen. You get it? And, and look at that verse, okay? Yeah, okay. For better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither, get, be saved, than that thou shouldest be put lower the depths of hell, in the presence of the prince, the prince of this world, whom thine eyes, uh, eyes have seen. Hey, you, you don't watch me anymore, more, but if you do, you know, talking to your buddy from England and whatnot, okay, you think you saw the Lord, you saw the devil. You need to repent and get saved. You're crazy. You didn't see God, okay? Your destination is hell, all right? Wake up! Wake up, people! Wake up! Okay? And Matthew 23, religiosity can be one of the greatest expressions of self-exhortation. Okay? Religiosity. That's how Satan uses religion. Okay? Matthew chapter 23. Come on. Verses 5 on to verse 7. Satan is all about visual stimuli. Okay? All right? Matthew chapter 23, verses 5 on to verse 7. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. The works of religiosity. Okay? Satan uses religiosity. And religiosity can be used as the highest form, the highest expression of self-exhortation. Okay? But all their works they do for it to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the, the borders of their garments and love the upper rooms at feasts. Okay? <laughs> and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Because it's all eye candy. 
with Satan and with his religiosity. And what is that in Timothy? What is that in Timothy? Uh, what, 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 is, what is that, brother? How, how, how would you know? How would you know? Uh, oh, 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 what is that? Uh, ah, thank you. <laughs> uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 24 and 25. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be ahead. See, when you're walking according to the Lord, according to the scripture, that is going to be manifest. Because you're not going to go to the same excess of riot, okay? If the Lord brings in a way to relieve suffering or, or something like that, you know that it's according to the Lord and his will, then you go for it, yes. But see, our walk with the Lord is a walk of purification, of sanctification, okay? The Lord will send help along the way, yes. But see, we are to trust on him and wait upon him. Satan is all about what you can see. Right, right now, rapido, rapido, okay? When the Lord and the process of sanctification, slow down there, youngster. Take a minute. Sit sit down. Let, let's reason together. Read a little while. I might not know you might not have tomorrow. But take time to be with the Lord. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, ooh, than that thou shouldest be, shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Remember Acts chapter 8 with Shimon the sorcerer who bewitched people with his sorceries, right? And then uh, Philip comes around and the people start believing uh, the Lord because of Philip, right? And Shimon, he's like, hey, this guy is preaching this other, this Jesus. And then he, and then uh, Shimon, he was, he believed and was baptized and these idiot uh, easy believism devils say he was a saved man. <laughs> but see, Shimon the sorcerer only was thinking of himself. And he wanted that power of the Holy Ghost so that he could lift himself up. It's all about him. Go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. See, Satan offers you... <laughs> wow. For God doth know... That in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be his gods, knowing good and evil. Think about it, brother, sister. What does Satan offer you? That you may see that ye may be as gods, knowing good and evil. He offers you things that are according to the sight. Oh, thank you, Lord. John 20, verses 24 on to verse 29. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. For the Jews require a sign. Okay? And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Shalom alaikum. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, not my wrists, my hands. And reach, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And we see here, it doesn't anywhere here say that Thomas actually went and he just saw, because the Jews require a sign. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. 
Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. The Lord rebuke you, any one of you whose faith is predicated because you have seen the Lord. The Lord rebuke you. You're not living by faith. You're living by sight. And while we're at it, Romans 10, of course. Romans 10, just one verse. Verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing is involved, yes, but what are we to hear? The word of God, the scriptures. And these people who claim they hear from the Lord, the things that they hear from the Lord apparently always are contrary to the scriptures because they're not hearing the Lord. They're hearing the devil. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. One verse, one verse. Verse 7. Verse 7. <laughs> For we walk by faith. Not by sight. And, and, and also too, uh, Roman, go back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verses 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? And that's exactly what Satan offers. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Are you getting it? Okay. Verse 25 in Romans 8. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with uh, patience wait for it. Hebrews 11 again. Hebrews 11. Just uh, two verses. One and six. If I can get there. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What does Satan do? Look at all of this. Shows you all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time through your YouTube preachers and your your uh, live streams or whatever or whatever shows you the religiosity look at them all look at that guy that that one past Baptist whatever with his suit and tie looking all pretty verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, <laughs> and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. How many of you have, well, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong, right? You willing to take that chance? Well, first of all, I'm not. It's, I'm not wrong. The scriptures are right. It's not my problem that you don't want to believe what God has said, but you want to believe that you are your own God and that you're a good person and that you can save yourself. But what if you're wrong about Christ, huh? First Corinthians fifteen verses twelve on to verse twenty-five. And you know what? A lot of these Christians, you know that Jesus is, is resurrected. Of course I do. But the way you live, the communication that comes out of your mouth, 
all speak to the contrary as because it's all about you, it's all glorifying yourself and about what you do and boasting you. That's not a life lived in the light of the resurrection of the Lord. I am to this day amazed that a majority of these Christians that I have encountered, and when you press them on this, someone claiming to be a Christian right away, of course I believe in the resurrection. Talk with them about temperance, about sanctification, about worldliness, huh? about being a vessel meet for the master's use, about how we are incapable of being sinless and how we are wretched, okay? You talk with them. It comes out. You don't believe that Jesus Christ actually rose from the dead because there is no power there. And there's no resurrection power there. You can't give up your addictions. But where's that resurrection power that, can, that is there for you? The Lord himself. Hmm? I ask you, you're looking at me. Yeah, you're a Christian, right? Of course I believe in the resurrection. <laughs> but the communication, the way you live your life, your witness, your testimony is all about what? You. And you rub it into people. That, that ain't a life lived in resurrection. Verses 12 on to verse 25. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Think about the easy belief as a heretic. Their faith is in their faith. Just like the people whose religion is the secret. See, that's what it is. Easy believism is the religion of the secret veiled in Christian terminology. Because why? They have faith in their faith. They don't have, you easy believism devils. You're, you do not have faith on Jesus Christ. Your faith is in your actual faith, not on the Lord. Name it and claim it, guys, like Doplin and all them schmucks. You have to have faith in your faith. My faith is on Jesus Christ. But your faith is in your faith itself. So that means that it all depends on you. That's why when you see a cru uh, crucifix with Christ on it, he's still on the cross. He hasn't died, buried, and rose again third day according to the scriptures. So if Christ is still on the cross, then that means that there's still something up to you to do. Hmm? Like keep the commandments or whatnot. Hmm? You get it? You get it? And, and what is that? Oh, I'm, I'm saved by my own belief. I'm saved by something I'm doing. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Why in the wide world of sports entertainment, brother, sister, do you, you, you end up pulling the hair out of your head, bashing your head against the wall, talking to some of these Christians? It's like, I, I can't. What? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is, is also vain. They don't believe in the resurrection. Of course, of course. Anyone, even, I mean, this is, this is, uh, and the infiltrators know this as well. This is infiltration 101. Uh, yeah. Okay, Christians are supposed to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Of course, I believe in the resurrection. Do you? Do you? Hmm? For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince, whom thine eyes have seen. And all these coadjutor devil infiltrators 
Look at them. Look at what they let you see. What better way to deflect from their falseness the fact that they're lost? What better way than to concentrate on attacking other people? There's a difference between exposing devils who are deceiving people, like Mark the Messenger, Bible flock box, and stuff like that. Okay, that's part of that's part of what we're supposed to do. Okay, to reprove them. To have no fellowship with the works of darkness, but rather reprove them, okay? That's what we're supposed to do, okay? But these other people who are always attacking other people, what better way to deflect the fact that they're lost by attacking other people? Okay? They're not saved. They don't believe in a resurrection. The resurrection. Christ is still on the cross. The easy believers and devils are a perfect example. They save themselves by their own belief. Their faith is in their faith. Yay. And we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. What if you're wrong? Huh? How many of you? How many times have you been asked that? What if you're wrong? The scripture's right. I'm wrong on many things, but the scriptures are right. You know, First John chapter five. These things have I written unto you that ye may know that you have eternal life? Why do you think the Catholic is, you know, uh, they can't know that they're going to heaven? Because it's a sin of presumption. Because they don't serve a risen Christ. They serve that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? They serve Satan. Okay? Because to the Catholic, Christ is still on the cross. So it's up to them. Okay? Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If, and, and right here. Right here. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Verse 20. But, and this is a beautiful but, <laughs> but now is Christ risen from the dead. And became become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, because we're all born sinners in that light. Okay? Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But see, in order for that to apply to you, you have to go to the Lord on his terms, not booting the door out of the way. Okay? <clears throat> But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, whom he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he put all enemies under his feet. For better it is, verse 7 in Proverbs 25, For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine, whom thine eyes have seen. While we're here, in 1 Corinthians 15, let's read verses 51 unto the end of the chapter. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, for better it, for better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and 
we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Hold, hold thy place there. Hold thy place there. Go to Hebrews chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Open right to it. Hebrews chapter 2, verses uh, 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Okay, how do you explain that? Simple. Romans chapter 6, ooh, ooh. Verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 7 again in Proverbs 25. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Let's finish this up. Back in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 56 on verse 58. <laughs> the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Because without the law you wouldn't know or what sin is. But thanks be to God, which give us, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Sister, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, That's it. Let's, let's just read this one more time. Proverbs 25, verses 4 and verse 7. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. Well, who calls what great men? Great men. Hmm? For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. That's going to be it for this video. This was not the video that I thought I was going to do today. Like I told you, I, I was rebuked by my brother and my sister, our brother, our sister, um, about, you know, need to be there for the brethren. You know, strengthen the brethren. Be more available because I'm, I am hard to get a hold of. See, see uh, the cell phone, it stays, it stays in here and I'm, I'm with my wife, it stays in here for a majority of the day, okay? It does. Uh, people will call me, email me, text me, and it's like, oh, and then I come in here, it's like, oh, I missed this, oh, I missed that, okay? All right, or doing something, some kind of whatever outside, you know, except for today, because it's, it's snowing. But, but see, this was what the Lord wanted me to speak on. And he is the one who is in charge, not me. That's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this video uploaded. Um, I hope uh, hope this uh, helped, helped you or edified you or encouraged you in some way. I hope so. The Lord be glorified. The Lord be glorified.
When it rains, it pours. But when it pours, after the rain and pouring, there comes forth fruit. Maybe some of us should start sharing that fruit, huh? I love you. Thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.